let f and g be differentiable functions with the conditions below find derivative of h of 1 when h of x is equal to f brackets g of x so you have this and we need to use the chain rule to take the derivative of h of x so the derivative of h of x let's write that down is equal to the derivative of f while leaving the inside which is g of x alone and then it's going to be times the derivative of g of x so as as it's required here we have the x it's one so we replace the x's with one so it's going to be derivative of h of one equals f and then g of one then times derivative of g of one so as as it's given um in this table we'll just write this down first so as it's given g of 1 is equal to 2 so this is going to be 2 times and derivative of g of 1 is equal to negative 3 so this is going to be negative 3 and then it's also given that derivative of f of 2 as it's written here is negative 4 so we replace that so we write this again equals negative 4 times negative 3 negative 3 negative let's just write this on the side so h of 1 equals to negative 4 times negative 3 which is equal to 12 in the function g of x equals a times b to power x represent exponential growth which statement about g of x is false if g of x represent exponential growth so a greater than 0 and b greater than 1 is correct here the asymptote is y equals to 0 which is correct the y-intercept is u and a, which is correct. Here, the x-intercept is b and 0, but there is no x-intercept, so choice 4 is false. So the answer will be choice 4. What is the average of a and b based on the conditions given below? Assuming that both a and b are positive. So a b is equal to 16 and a over b is equal to 4. So first we're going to solve for a over b equals to 4. So we just write that down. 
and to solve this we're gonna have to convert 4 into a fraction so it's gonna be 4 over 1 so then we would have a over b equals 4 over 1 and then we, we cross multiply so a multiplied by 1 is going to stay as a then equals 4 multiplied by b is 4b so a is equal to 4b and then for a b equals 16 we already have a as we already found out it's a equals 4b so we just substitute so 4b multiplied by b which is here equals to 16 4b multiplied by b is going to be 4b squared equals to 16. to get rid of the 4 we will divide it onto both sides so over 4 over 4 these are going to cancel out each other so we're going to have 16 over 4 which is equal to 4. so b squared is going to be equal to 4. now we don't want the squared so we're just going to square root the 4 so it's going to be b over square root 4 and the square root of 4 is 2 so b is equal to 2 and now we're just going to solve for a again because a is equal to 4b and we want to get rid of the b so a equals 4b now since we found the b we can get rid of it here so since b is equal to 2 4 is multiplied by 2 which is 8 so a is equal to 8 now we have b and a so a is equal to 8 and b is equal to 2 okay and now we need to put that in the formula of finding the average so it's b equals a plus b over 2. now we substitute the numbers as we know a is equals 8 so 8 plus and b is 2 so we put 2 and then we put the over 2 equals 8 plus 2 is 10 over 2 10 over 2 is 5 so the answer is 5 which in this case is c Summary statics for the number of campsites and different emirates in the UAE are as the follows Minimum 0, Q1 35, Median 61, Q3 95, Maximum 300, Mean 73.2, Standard Deviation 58 A check of the data shows that 5 have been subtracted from every value to bring the minimum to zero for some calculation purpose, if 5 is added back to every value, what will now be the integral range and the standard deviation? So now we will be writing the interquartile range, which is equal to Q3 minus Q1 can find them here the sh table shown so they will be 95 minus 35 equals to 60 then the standard deviation SD equals to 58 as it's shown in the table Adding or subtracting a constant amount to each value in a set of data doesn't affect the standard deviation and the interquartile range, since the distance from the center does not change, only the location of the center. So the answer will be this one.
the terminal side of theta and angle in standard position intersect the unit circle at p negative 1 over 3 negative square root of 3 what is the value of secant theta the x coordinate is cos theta and the y coordinate is sine theta so secant theta equals to 1 over cosine theta equals to 1 over negative 1 over 3 the answer would be negative 3 so the correct choice is a if line l is vertical which of the following expressions represent the length of line a b in the diagram shown First, you have to determine what is given and what is required. What's given to you is that this over here is a unit circle and it has a radius of 1. And the adjacent side of this angle is 1. So it's given to you. And it asks you which expressions represent the, the length of line AB in this diagram. This is line AB. Since it's given to you the adjacent and we need to find the opposite, which is line AB, we are going to use tan since tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. So the answer is tan. Aisha is riding a motorcycle from home, 6 kilometers to the north and 8 kilometers to the east. Determine the final position of Aisha since she left home. So to solve this question, we need to, to first draw a diagram, draw a direction. Let's first draw the directions, so we can have guidance. So this is going to be north, west, east, and south. Now let's say this is Aisha's home, and she went 6 kilometers to the north which is up, so the 6 km up, and then 8 km to the east, which is to the right, so 8 km. This is going to turn into a right angle, and in this case a right triangle. So the final position of Aisha is going to be equal to the length of this let's name it d so to find the length of this we need to use the pythagoras theorem for right triangles so the pythagoras theorem is going to be d equals to square root this plus this so it's going to be six and then we're going to square it plus 8 kilometers squared we're gonna close this 6 squared is gonna be 36 plus 8 squared is gonna be 64 okay, it's gonna close this equals 36 plus 64 is gonna be 100 the square root of 100 is 10 so the answer is 10 and to find the direction we add the two directions she went in which is north and east so it's 10 north east the answer is d